Hello and welcome back to another Haunted Newfoundland Libraries. Today we have some spine tingling tales from Carboneer, Lewisport, and Buren. What scares you? A cool breeze across your neck? An unexplained sound? A smell that brings back memories? Let's listen to Tracy as she shares her stories from the Carboneer Public Library. Now, the two people that are involved in this story, uh, which is a great ghost story, one was a summer student, but I don't want to use their names because I didn't ask their permission. That's okay, you don't have to. Okay, so I had a lovely summer student who was helping out with TD Summer Reading Club, and she happens to be a classical singer. And she kept coming to my office, Tracy, were you calling me? Were you calling me? And I'm like, no, I wouldn't yell at you from my office. I would come out and see you. And she said, well, somebody's calling my name in this soft voice. And I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna make up a name. Patty, Patty. And I was like, no, it's not me. I said, are you sure it's not the air vent? Blah, blah, blah. She's like, no. And then a few days later, she said, you know, I think there's ghosts in the library. And I said, well, you know, lots of books fly off the shelves here. And the municipal bylaw officer often gets calls out that there's an alarm went off in the building and it shows that it's in the library and there's nothing here. There's no windows open, there's nothing moving in the air, but there's books on the floor. So anyway, she, so she listened to me about that and then it kept happening. So then she was doing, she, her and another friend were putting on a little uh, classical performance here for the TD Summer Reading Club. I remember that. Yes, it was. Yes, that was awesome. great. Oh. But she forgot the music stand. So she had to go home to pick up the music stand. And our lovely tenor was practicing in the children's library. And I had a, a summer student uh, who was working here, another summer student, and she loved classical music. So she was watching him practice. And all of a sudden, on the lower case, a book shot out about six feet and landed perfectly straight up, while our tenor stood up and ran screaming to my office that the ghost was there and he now believed it because he saw the book shoot out, fly off the shelf, and he was terrified. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it, was, it was quite the thing. So then when Abe, so when our other, uh, singer finally arrived with the music stand there was all this kerfuffle over that he'd act actually seen a book fly out and it wasn't like you know how a book will fly off or fall off if yeah. the span is gone this actually shot off the shelf out six to eight feet and landed straight up ghosts love classical music and it's very very common for hauntings and um presentations to be around music so I thought that was really interesting they were used to it now I have another story about the ghosts here the ghosts because I think they're coming from the books I think the ghosts are coming from the books uh, the front of the library was being painted and the municipal bylaw officer was in to come and talk to the fellows that were painting the library and as he was standing there because he's had the he's the one that's had the call outs in the middle of the night that there's something in the library and there's nothing in the library anyway he was standing talking to the two painters and one of the um paranormal romances at the front where they're painting and one of the books shot up through the air and landed on the other side of where they were painting <laughs> they, they had to take a break after that one uh, who was up in the Newfoundland section one day and she said to me I came up and she looked very very solemn and she said I, I, I think you have a ghost and I said well I've been told that before and she said I heard a lady laughing there's nobody here I looked around and she said and they laughed again and she said it was coming from right this area but there's no one here and I said no it's you and me and there was a uh, a young boy on one of the computers and there was an adult over the adult computers but they were men it was a man so the laughter was coming from the newfoundland section uh -huh. <laughs> so i've got a question for you sure 
Um, do you believe in ghosts, or do you just think this is some other thing that is happening that can be explained away? I do believe in ghosts. Have you always believed in ghosts, or has this cemented your belief? It has cemented my belief. This is called My Ghost, and it's from Bobby Benson in Lewisport. The first thing that made me think I had a ghost in the library was the smell. It would waft out of nowhere, this overly floral, perfumey sort of scent, like your grandmother wore in the 70s and 80s, but stronger, floating amongst the books. Never on the computer side, always in the books. The adult fiction, specifically. You're thinking I'm crazy, I know. Smell? So maybe, on its own, not much to go on, but there's more. Once upon a time, we had a motion-operated uh, towel dispenser in the bathroom. Not practically. Now, practically from the moment it was installed, I had issues. I would be sitting at my desk, which is next to the bathroom, and something would activate it. The first time, there was only a couple paper towels on the floor. As time went on, though, the ghost either began to really enjoy this game or was getting madder at it, and the volume of paper towels on the floor continued to increase until at one point, I couldn't stop it. There were so many, I couldn't count them. It was a veritable mountain of paper towels. We now have a manual paper towel dispenser. She, I assume, because of the smell of perfume, hasn't figured this one out yet. What she has figured out, though, is how to knock things down. Books tend to randomly fall off the shelves around here and I'll put them away, and a lot of times certain ones will fall off the shelf once or twice. Sure, this is a coincidence, but a few times a week the same book, repeatedly, will fall off. Books aren't the only things she likes to knock around. We have these masks that hang on the wall, a gargoyle, the devil, King Tut, an African mask, etc. They're really quite beautiful, but she hates them. They're her favorite thing to knock down. One year, Halloween was on a Wednesday night, and I'm open on Wednesday nights. She kept knocking the devil down the whole night. You think I'm making this up? I swear it's true. I guess the biggest thing that makes me think that there's a ghost here is just the feel. Weird, but true. There's just a feeling of otherness, of never quite being alone. The feeling you get when the hair on the back of your neck prickles. I get that when she comes too close. Sometimes. It just goes cold for a moment, but she's definitely here. Again, that was from Bobby in Lewisport. Our next story is from the Buren Memorial Public Library, and this is from Patricia Peddle, who is the library technician that works there. When I started working here at Buren Library as a sole charge librarian, anytime I was here alone, it was quiet. I could hear someone walking around the library. The footsteps sounded like the steps of a big man. I searched the library and the school, but I was the only person in the building. This happened many times when I was alone. One day, after I walked around the inside of the library, which I do every day to make sure the students didn't leave a mess, and there was nothing on the floor. A couple of minutes later, I walked back down to the back to reshelf some books, and there was a couple of books on the floor when I hadn't heard the sound of them falling and no one else had been in the library. He would often turn the volume up or down if I had the radio on or move the dial slightly so it was no longer on the station. He also likes to move chairs around or just pull them out from the tables and computer desks just to let me know he was there. One day I mentioned this to the cleaning lady I hadn't told anyone about it up to that point except my husband, and she told me of an encounter she had in the school gym. She had been cleaning the gym and heard something being dragged across the stage. The stage curtains were closed so she couldn't see anything, and she walked up the steps to the stage expecting to see one of the teachers, even though she knew she was the only person in the school. But there was no one there, and she could see there was a table had been pulled across the stage. She had just finished cleaning the stage, so she knew the position the table had been in, but now it was on the other side of the stage. Many of the cleaning staff also heard things moving in the gym when they were alone. 
that's when we figure out that the school in the library had a ghost. The next time I found books on the floor, I asked him to please not make a mess and told him he was welcome to be there any time. Since then, I've no trouble with him and he makes sure I know he's there with his footsteps and moving books and chairs. Many substitutes, students, and other workers have heard his footsteps as well. It's not only me. I would figure I was imagining it, but one night when my daughter-in-law, she wasn't my daughter-in-law then, was working as my CAP employee, she called me in a panic, wanting my husband to come over right away because she heard footsteps, but couldn't find anyone in the library. Bob came over right away and searched everywhere, but couldn't find anyone or any, anything making the footsteps. I had told him about the ghost, but he really didn't believe me until that night. And that was from Patricia in Buren.